Welcome to Viking Basketball with Coach Barrett Peary as the Portland State Vikings get ready to take on the Weber State Wildcats this weekend, two games at home, Friday night, 7 p.m., Sunday at noon. And, of course, you can watch both games on the live stream. Just go to govikes.com uh, to do that. And, Coach, it was a really, really short non-conference schedule. <laughs> so I'm guessing right now. I might have another one for you, though. Uh, We're in the works. Okay, I'm guessing right now you're wishing you had more time but you just got to roll it out there and hope the guys are ready to go against Weber State. Yeah, well, we've got two weeks under our belt now and three games, and, and we've seen some good things, and, and we've let a lot of guys play, and uh, we've grown a lot. Yeah, big week for us coming up with Weber State. Two games at home with the exact same team, which is odd as can be, and you and I are kind of shaking our heads on that as well, but that's just all about 2020 and roll into 2021 with the same type of schedule. Okay, and I took a look at it, Normally, in a regular season, you have about seven weeks of non-conference play yeah. from early November till just around the first of the year when conference play starts. This year, you've had less than three weeks to this point of non-conference play, less than three weeks of full contact practice. So in that preparation, do you sit in your office and try to figure out, well, we got to throw this out, we don't have time for this? or? How do you really get fully prepared? All of the above. Um, I think that we've looked at things and said, hey, I really like to do this and I normally do this, but I don't know if we have time to do that. And we got to get ready for this game and we got this and this and that going on. So yeah, it, I think it's like that every day, Mike. And as we go through it and, and look at different things and figure out if we have time to put this game plan in or put this in, as well as just get the guys on the floor and have time on the floor playing together. You know, like this week, it's going to be kind of tugging at both sides of me with just how we use our time the wisest we can as far as prepping for the other team, but also really working hard on our team getting better. You know, we're literally in the middle of week three and we're in the middle of league now. We're, we're into league now. And so it's so odd. And, um, you know, I likened it to the women's staff this morning as we were talking in the hallway. I said, you know, it's almost like both of our teams, our entire teams had off-season surgery and they had the entire summer and fall to heal and now we just got this player back about two weeks ago and so let's get them integrated into the system the problem is it's not one or two players it's all 15 now trying to get them into the system and get them in shape and get them back rolling and i think we've seen that a little bit in stretches with our games where it's like little shots that people can make in their sleep um, they don't have their timing yet they're not used to it we haven't played with much contact and then you know i wrestle with the fact that this week's a perfect week of how much contact do we do with two weeks coming up and how are our bodies handling it and what should we do and what's most important? Okay, and I'm going to have you analyze a little bit as we go into this season. Uh, what have we seen in three games? Well, we've seen that Peary pressure that we're used to seeing in past years, that full court pressure defense that has given the opponent some trouble. Uh, we've seen a lot of new players. We've talked about that over and over and you're still trying to evaluate and figure out who fits where and who plays how much. And I think the one thing that's been kind of obvious too, is the team has not shot the ball as well as you would like. You just referenced that. So what is your overall take from these first three games? Yeah, you know, I think there's some, been some signs and some numbers like, you know, against Washington State, we were really good on the glass and they had been good on the glass going into that game, but we beat them on the glass at both ends. Um, we, turned them, we're we turned them over. We've turned the ball over too much, but that hasn't shocked me at all, turning the ball over and missing shots that I think we can make. That hasn't shocked me, unfortunately, just because of reps and opportunity and getting in game-like rhythm. So I think that'll come, but it has to come quick because it's all real now. Okay, let's take a quick look now at Weber State, and it has been the powerhouse program in the Big Sky Conference since the conference was formed in the early 60s. And they've done a great job of coming up with players uh, with great talent. Now, last year they had a backcourt of Cody John and Jarek Harding, a couple of really, really skilled players. They have moved on, they have graduated, but I'll be darned if Randy Ray didn't find another guy, Isaiah Brown, currently leading the Big Sky and scoring 24 points a game. What have you seen from Weber State on the video? Yeah, you know, I think Weber's a lot like us. They played a, non, a couple non-division ones and they played Boise State uh, when we played Washington State. They, they lost that game on the road, but 
in talking to Randy, you know, we're good friends and we go way back. He brought in a lot of new guys too, just like us, but Isaiah's really hit the ground running for them and gotten himself comfortable in a hurry. And, you know, like you mentioned, Randy's always got good guards that really score the ball, and this is just another one in a long line of good guards. And along with Isaiah Brown, as you look at the roster, some experienced big men. Last year, maybe not as strong inside as they had been in previous seasons, and that showed in their one loss record, but it looks like they've stocked up again there. Yeah, they have good size and got some good transfers around the basket that, that have good experience. And again, our rosters kind of mirror each other a lot as far as like, uh, what we tried to bring in in the transfer market as well as the experience market. And so um, I expect a great weekend from them and they're going to be ready to go. You know, we've had good luck with them the last couple of years. We swept them last year. We split the year before, um, but they always do a great job. Okay, last question, and this will be the important question this year. How do you deal with back-to-back -back games against the same opponent? What's, what's the secret? Um, no idea. How, how would we know the secret? We've never done it yet. So um, I think you're going to have to be very uh, understanding of what Friday looks like in between those games. You know, this week's Saturday, actually, with Friday, Sunday, but normally it's going to be Thursday, Saturday. That in-between day is going to be very interesting, whether you win or lose and how you handle it. I think an, an easy win for an opponent could be a very nervous uh, 36 hours going into the next one and trying to keep the guys up and not let down. But I think you could see a lot of splits. You know, the first weekend, though, Idaho went to SAC, and SAC swept that one. Montana went to Southern Utah and swept that one. So we'll see. It's going to be interesting to evaluate over a course of time. Well, we're going to find out very quickly as the Vikings are already jumping into Big Sky Conference play. Once again, Weber State this weekend, Friday and Sunday, right here from the Viking Pavilion. This has been Viking Basketball with Coach Barrett Perry.